guys, Sid from Sid's Trains here, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesday. Let's see what I got on the workbench. So today we're going to be working on the K4 some more. In the first video on this engine, I told you that I was going to be installing Legacy into this engine. This originally was a scale, but conventional Tuscan K4. Lionel produced uh, two cab numbers uh, back around 2010-ish. One was 5409, the other was 5436. This is 5436, and it was a conventional engine, uh, but it still had rail sounds, it had fan-driven smoke, and it chuffed, but it was very, very basic. It didn't even have uh, marker lights that uh, were illuminated, they were just solid. Um, it didn't have a cab light, didn't even have firebox flicker, and the holes for even the uh, marker lights and the cab light and the firebox flicker uh, weren't even there, so I had to uh, add those um, for those features to be available. And uh, that kind of uh, made it a little tricky in ways, but overall it's been easy working on it, and I've already installed some electronics on the inside. And something else that I've worked on is the second smoke unit for this engine. I'm installing whistle steam in this engine as this engine originally, or the legacy version, had whistle steam in it. Uh, this dome here, if I can grab it, pops off. It's a little tricky sometimes. Come on. There we go. Okay. So this dome pops off. And if you, it might be hard to see if I can get the camera angle just right. Okay. My camera just, there we go. So if you see there's that little hole right there, and that hole is where the smoke shoots out. And the smoke goes through this hole, through the dome, and out that hole. And on top of the engine is this hole, where this smoke unit will sit underneath. And I did a time lapse of me assembling that smoke unit, but it's a really long time lapse. I had to put it all together, but overall it was, it was pretty fun doing it, but... Uh, I don't want to show you all of it, but here's some, uh, I'm showing you right now some clips of um, me assembling that, but let me put this dome back on and we can continue talking about what's going on. There we go. So that's what I've uh, been doing is just working on the electronics on the inside and of course that smoke unit. And I'm going to start off by showing you the tender as it's the most basic and it's totally done. Nothing, there's nothing else for me to do in it. So let's go take a look at the tender first. So starting out on the bottom, the only thing I did under here was install this uh, electrocoupler instead of the old uh, knuckle coupler. So that's the only thing under here. Everything else stayed the same. Left the pickup rollers, uh, left the IR tether, and everything else stayed the same. So let me now take this shell off. just pops off like that. And here's all the electronics. Let me set this shell to the side. So actually, before I do that, I do want to mention that I was not able to... Um, install a the backup light or marker lights on the back because similar to the engine these are solid lenses these these just have little jewels in them uh, with no uh, there's no hole for the lights and uh, on the engine side I was able to get um, replacement ones from the legacy version that had holes for um, the little LEDs but I could not get any for back here and I'm pretty sure the only way to do that would be to buy a legacy shell. And that's just hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And it's just not worth doing that. So the tender will not have lights, but that's not a big deal. All that really matters is that it has the, the main features like the sounds, the whistle steam, the stack steam, and some of the main lighting, which it does. So onto the tender here. It looks very similar to the way it did... Uh, um, when I first opened it up, uh, there's the big speaker box here in the center with the two mini fat boys. This is the volume knob over here that usually sticks up and out through this hatch here. This hatch opens and that's usually where it sticks out through. Uh, we have the rail sounds board here. And it had K4 sounds in it, but they were not legacy K4 sounds. They were conventional K4 sounds, so they could not work with the new legacy electronics that I am installing in this. So I had to replace the board, uh, but it still sounds the same with the K4 whistle, bell, chuffing, crew talk, all that. Um, uh, I redid some of the wiring. As you see, I have the zip ties here. It's nice and neat. And uh, 
I made the custom harnesses over here for these plugs and some of the and I think one other plug uh, this plug here uh, I did all that custom uh, making the harness and putting the pins all together and then this right here was something that the board or the, the whole setup here did not have originally uh, this is what is called a uh, LTC one or that's that's the line out part name for it uh, this is usually uh, used to control your uh, knuckle couplers with in your tenders and uh, some of the lighting in the tender and usually Lionel hooks up the IR sensor that would go on the bottom of their trains for the LCS sensor track I did not install one so the only use I have for it here is the knuckle coupler which it needs to be here and I, I mounted, mounted it where where the uh, I'm like talking so quick I'm just stumbling over myself I installed it where there were holes for this board already because this is a legacy engine but it was dumbed down so the holes were already there I just bought the screws and the mount and the board and I attached them and of course made a custom harness if I get up close here I uh, added the pins in for all these plugs and of course crimped all the wires cut them to the right length and it looks really good now I'm really happy with this result and if you follow me on Instagram you saw a quick video of me uh, pulling this behind my S3 uh, Milwaukee Road S3 Northern for a test before I had the actual K4 working but uh, that's uh, about all for the tender so now I'm going to uh, just flip it over here and uh, put the screws back in and then we will go take a look at the engine so I got the engine sitting here now and I already took the uh, shell screws off so all I need to do is uh, set this aside here and just uh, slowly pull up on the shell. I, I routed some of the wires so that I can then just uh, pull them a little and then the shell should just pop right off. Uh, actually, oh yeah, I forgot that I have an antenna wire that is connected right here. But other than that, I then just set the shell to the side. None of, this wi none of these wires are... Um, uh, routed completely well the they're routed where they're supposed to go but they're not organized as you see they're just kind of hanging around here so let me uh, move this to the side so you can get a better look at everything there we go so uh here is the k4 on the inside uh, starting out at the front or up in the shell i have the smoke unit and i've installed uh, the smoke unit down there and it works really nice, and I like how that uh, how it works up in there. Uh, now I'm showing you some pictures of the inside, or not the inside, the the front of the engine. And I had to uh, drill out the uh, sides of the shell to route the wires for the marker lights. I also had to install a new LED headlight in the engine. Uh, unlike before, it had a simple bulb, now it has an LED, which looks really good, and it's much better than the old bulb. And obviously in the picture you see the metal shavings, um, but I was just trying to uh, do it as cleanly as possible. You don't want burrs coming out of the holes. Uh, you might see in the pictures there's metal shavings, but as you notice the holes are very clean. I used a very uh, nice... Uh, very nice set of drill bits and that gave me a very clean uh, hole in the end which is what I wanted and the front end looks really good and I did the same for the uh, for the flickering firebox the firebox did not have holes for the light to come through so I drilled out the four holes in the firebox door and those came out re really nice as well Again, there are shavings all over the place, which I cleaned out, of course. But there are no burrs on the holes, and the holes look really good. So that's really what matters, and I'm really happy with the outcome of that. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm happy with how this is going so far. And I think it's looking really good. So now let's take a look at what we have here. I've zoomed in just a little. I'm trying to get my camera to focus better. There we go. So here is the Legacy Electronics. As I said, there's the smoking at the front. I showed you all the lighting and stuff that I've done. But the first major thing that I replaced was the motor. The old motor 
did not have this flywheel with this little black ring on it. This black ring is um, the encode is called the encoder ring, and it allows this sensor, the sensor board. You see these two plugs. Uh, this is a sensor that the legacy electronics use to measure um, how fast the engine is moving, and that then determines the chuff for the engine. And the old motor did not have this. Obviously, I could have installed those on here, but it's just cheaper to buy a whole new motor. So I bought a motor from one of the Legacy K4s, and it fits right in, uh, no problem. And I've, of course, put new uh, the wires on for them, or the, the plugs for the sensor and the motor. And again, custom wiring. I, re I used the uh, pins and the plugs, and I made my custom harness. The same thing for the smoke unit, all these wires running underneath the motor and over to here. All of, the, all of the wiring in here is custom. And inside the shell, you might be able to see there's this wire running along the side of the shell. I have that attached to the shell on the side so that when, instead of the wires running all underneath the motor, only the smoke unit wire runs there and the rest run along the side and don't get in the way. At the back here, we have the... Uh, main uh, motherboards, but let me get a better shot because I'm kind of at a wide shot right now So let me zoom in a little closer and then you can get a better look So here's a better look at all the electronics this right here is called the RCMC This is the main motherboard or control board for the engine uh, This controls the motor the lighting the sounds everything. This is the main control board and it's installed here on the chassis. Underneath it is a um, heat sink, uh, which takes all the heat from the electronics and disperses it uh, so it doesn't overheat. All of these parts are from the Legacy K4, and I just was able to install them pretty much bolt-on since this is basically the same engine with some slight differences. Um, I removed the old board that was in here. The old board sat right about here. And uh, it wasn't anything special. It was just a generic Lionel E unit. And, of course, I've replaced that with this. So to start out, I have my custom wiring up here. This is for the motor and the power uh, pickups. Uh, once again, custom wiring with the harness. Uh, the plugs have custom, or everything is custom. I just keep saying that over and over. Let me just say it one last time. These plugs you cannot buy from Lionel. You can't buy the harnesses from Lionel, so I have to make them custom. I crimp new pins onto the wires, stick them into the plugs, and then I plug the plugs in. That's the basic idea of everything being custom. Uh, back here, this is the flickering firebox PCB. On this side, there's a little uh, red board that has some LEDs on the sides of it that, that kind of flash back and forth to create a flickering effect. Um, I have new switches put down here and on the other side for, I believe it's uh, Odyssey, uh, Rum Program, and then the two smoke units on the other side. And then, of course, we have the lighting that I, the lighting wiring up here, as I said before. And then up inside the cab here is a, um, a cab light. But uh, this is basically the whole setup of this engine. It's very, very simple. It's, it's kind of crazy to think that Legacy is cr uh, super complicated, which in some cases it is very, very complicated. But in this scenario, it's quite simple. There is a control board, a motor, lighting, smoke units. Pretty simple. Um, so the next thing that I have to do is install this smoke unit. This smoke unit uh, sits down in the shell up here. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I've already assembled it, as I said before, so I'm going to install it up in the shell. So let me move the camera shot and we can install that. Uh, but before I do that, I actually have to add some wires here. I didn't notice I didn't add wires to the, the uh, motor leads on the fan motor. But I'll do that and then we'll go install it. So here's the smoke unit again. and I've attached some wires here. I red one and a black one for the uh, motor leads on the uh, fan motor. And up here you can see the hole for where the smoke will go out and into the, uh, the dome for the smoke, uh, or for the whistle steam. And here's the smoke unit, and it's the same as the one up here, except it has this little ring on the brass fitting to uh, help seal and have smoke fluid not leak. So I'll just take this, 
and set it down into the uh, the uh, the shell here. It's uh, actually it's pretty. It's actually quite simple. It uh, just literally sets right down in there, and that's how it goes. I obviously have to install some screws in, but I have this sitting on the side, and now I'm going to install those screws. So I've popped the dome off to show you, there's the little brass fitting that I showed you that has that little seal uh, o-ring on it. And here's the dome, and you just, like I did before, you just take the dome, you slide it underneath this little tube, and then you have to press on it just a little to get it to go down on there. But once it's on, it's sealed. Uh, I, can, I can pull on this, but it, it'll hold on there. So that seal really does a good job at keeping smoke from going into the boiler, and instead only coming out the uh, smoke unit hole so that when you blow the whistle there's a nice stream of smoke coming out this way and the whistle steam smoke effect is a very cool feature that Lionel has and it looks really good on the K4 so uh, this is about all I want to show in this video of the work I've been doing uh, I'm going to do uh, what, probably one more video on this engine where I uh, wire up this smoke unit and uh, complete a couple other things and, and uh, of course run it around but for now Let's go put this onto the layout and start it up and show you uh, how it runs so far. So I got the K4 sitting on the track here and I'll use the extended startup for it. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. I read you. Over. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Roger that. Ready to move. There we go. I, uh, this, I turned the smoke unit on and you can tell that right now it's letting out a decent amount of smoke. And it might be hard to tell, but these marker lights are uh, illuminated. Uh, these ones down here are not for the same reason as the tender. These ones are solid and I can't uh, get uh, ones that have holes in them. So these will just stay with the jewels, but these uh, are illuminated. Uh, up here you can see the LED headlight in I installed. It, uh, it works really well. It's a nice warm white color and uh, it suits the engine well. Uh, here's the whistle, of course. And to, to, to show you that this is a legacy engine, I'll quill it. And it might be hard to see, but if, if you see the cab light flashing, that's because the auxiliary or the uh, whistle steam smoke unit is not hooked up. And the uh, main uh, RCMC motherboard is doesn't like that. If you don't have it hooked up, it throws an error code and the cab light flashes. But uh, let me move the engine so you can see the smoke unit puff. Let me put it in reverse. This thing smokes really well. Now you see the Rule 17 lighting. And the light dims there. Uh, let me turn off the lights and <laughs> the smoke is just going all over the place. Let me turn off the lights so you can see the uh, marker lights a little better. So with the lights out you can really see the smoke. Uh, now you can see the marker lights uh, being illuminated. Uh, they're kind of dim uh, just because these lenses are kind of dark uh, to begin with with the dark green lenses and then the, the LEDs aren't extremely bright but they are illuminated as you can see and you can see the, uh, the cab light flashing of course. Uh, overall this looks really good and let me uh, go to the cab so you can see the, uh, the firebox flicker. So I've zoomed in a little for you and you can really get a good look at the flickering firebox. Uh, in this view you can see the holes I drilled, uh, they're nice and clean and you see the flickering effect. I've also turned the smoke unit off so that you can uh, see the cab light just staying on solid 
and not uh, flashing uh, up in there. It's just a basic LED that I installed and it looks really good and of course shuts off when the engine starts moving or flashes because this is a legacy engine and it shows the error code. So to wrap up this video, after showing you all the features uh, that are working so far and all the work I've done on this engine, uh, let's run it around for a little. As always, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid, and I'll see you next time, guys.